Nightmare Containment is the new seasonal activity in Season of the Haunted, and taking part in this activity is going to be the best way to get hold of the returning opulent loot, including fan favourites like Ostringer and Beloved. Also, it's a really good place to get the new seasonal loot, including that new trace rifle, the shotgun, and also the scout rifle too. Well, today I'm going to run through a guide for the Nightmare Containment activity, plus look at how to get opulent keys, and also find those secret loot chests at the end of the event. Well, if you're new around here or find this useful, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below for all the latest Destiny 2 content, and turn on notifications by hitting that bell. And roughly 98% of viewers who watch this week in video games aren't subscribed, so subscribe today and never miss an update. Well, Kallus' Leviathan ship has made a return this season, and this is the destination for the new Nightmare Containment activity. Now, we've got to use a new item to capture nightmares working with Eris Morn while she tries to figure out exactly what Kallus is up to this season. This event is multifaceted, and at first it can be confusing, so today I'm going to break down all the steps plus have a look at the rewards too. Well, Nightmare Containment is a public event similar to other public events you'll find on the planets and the moons. This takes place on the derelict Leviathan ship, and when you visit the new space, it's more than likely you're going to find other Guardians taking part in the activity. As with other seasonal events, it introduces new currencies plus mechanics that you're going to have to piece together, but give it a few runs and everything will slot into place. It's a great activity for earning seasonal loot, including returning opulent weapons, plus the new seasonal weapons and also armor too. Well, first of all, let's have a look at where Nightmare Containment is, and we'll have a look at accessing the activity. So the derelict Leviathan can be found by selecting the moon on the director, and then you'll find the place you want to go in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. And when you select the Leviathan node, you'll see that you've got some options. So you can launch into the Castellum, or you can join the Containment. So if you want to explore Callus' ship, then select the Castellum, and then you'll be able to freely roam around the environment and search for secrets. If you're focused on the Nightmare Containment, then select Containment. Even though you've got two options, the game won't stop you from taking part in the activity or exploring, so it is a little bit confusing, but don't worry about it too much. Just select the one you want and jump in there. Well, next up, we've got the Vestiges of Dread. So this is a new currency you're going to want to pay attention to this season. Now, having a good cache of Vestiges of Dread allows you to get seasonal rewards at the end of the activity. And ideally, you want to be heading into the activity with a good amount. This can be found by completing public events on the Derelict Leviathan, finding the planting materials, completing playlist activities, and also completing the containment public event. Plus you'll get it for simply killing enemies throughout the solar system. Pretty much anything is going to reward you with this new Vestiges of Dread currency. So it's going to cost you 500 to access the rewards from the Nightmare Harvester at the end of the activity, so once you've defeated the Tier 3 boss in Nightmare Containment. It's a good idea to have at least 500 before you head into the activity, then that is going to be much more rewarding for you. Next up, let's have a look at how to start Nightmare Containment. So Nightmare Containment is on the Derelict Leviathan, and this week it's located in the Castellum. However, if you have a look around the other parts of the Leviathan ship, then you're going to see the hazy red location where Containment can be started. This suggests that Containment is going to move around the Leviathan in future weeks, and what you're looking for is a glowing red scepter, and this kicks off the event. Plant the item in the ground and things are going to get going, and then the objective of the event is to draw out the nightmares on board the ship and bind them to the Nightmare Harvester, flushing them out of the Leviathan, therefore stopping Callus's plan. This activity is split into three tiers, so you've got Tier 1, Tier 2 and Tier 3, and you'll be able to see which tier the activity you're in with an indicator on the screen, and when you've started the event or join the activity in progress. The tiers increase in difficulty as you progress, and then when you get to Tier 3, you're going to be fighting a big boss. Well, first of all, let's have a look at Tier 1 and Tier 2, as they are quite similar. So when you start the event, the objective is to collect Shards of Dread. And all you have to do for this is kill the enemies, and you're going to collect that. And you're going to be powering up the Nightmare Harvester at the same time. You're going to get approximately one shard per enemy kill, but you're going to see progress on the left-hand side of the screen as the circle fills up. Throughout this phase, you're going to have harder Nightmare enemies to try and kill you, and they are called Dreadbearers. So they have yellow health bars, plus they're often surrounded by other Nightmares. So these ones are going to be tough to take down, so try and use heavy or special weapons to take them down, and look out for the essence of Nightmares. They are the glowing red balls on the ground, and these are going to give you a nice damage buff. So also look out for patrols that have you killing enemies, 
as you're going to be able to double up on activities and get more rewards. So once you've killed the Dread Bearers, they're going to drop an orb called a Core of Dread. So pick up that orb and run back to the Nightmare Harvester and dunk that orb. That's going to cause a Reaper Scythe to spawn, and you're going to want to pick this up and use it for more damage on your enemies. You're going to attack enemies with light attacks and heavy attacks with the Scythe, and also cause flames to cross the ground from a distance, or you can slam directly into the enemies. You know, either way, this is a powerful weapon that's going to help you take down the enemies much faster. So once you've collected enough shards of dread, then you've got to kill four Eragor Atavists, and these are Scions which basically spawn inside bubble shields. These Scions can be hidden, so what you have to do is take out these Sniper Scions first to reveal them. So once you've revealed these, jump inside their bubbles, punch them to death, and then it's on to the next step. So when you've completed a couple of waves of this, then the tough yellow bar enemy will spawn. You can be able to damage this enemy for a little while, and then it's going to have shields. Look out for the diamond-shaped resonant splinters that are hovering in the air. Shoot them to drop the shield, and then complete this phase of the activity. Once you've killed the miniboss, then you'll see an icon on the screen for the location, and you can move on to the next phase. So don't leave it too long though, as you could miss out, so make sure you get to that next phase of the activity between Tier 1 and Tier 2 nice and quickly. Well next up we've got Tier 3, so once you complete the first two phases, it's on to the final phase, which is a big boss battle. Now this week we're seeing a former Baron in the shape of the Machinist, and this battle is split into the three phases, where you want to do as much damage as possible, and then the boss is going to have some shields, and then your attention turns to clearing the adds, plus the resonant splinters. The boss's health is split into thirds, so once you get down a third, his shields are going to come up and you're going to find yourself fighting two elite abominations. Take those out as quickly as you possibly can, and that's going to open up the boss to damage. So continue to burn down the boss's health until you've done about two thirds worth of damage, and then it's going to get shields again. The dread bearers will appear this time, kill them and dunk the orbs into the Nightmare Harvester to get the scythes, and that is going to help you with clearing the adds. So watch out for the diamond-shaped resonant splinters in the air, Clear these and then resume the damage on the boss. So basically, in the final tier 3 phase, you're putting all the mechanics together, and before too long, you will have killed the boss, and now it's time to collect your loot. A chest is going to spawn near the Nightmare Harvester, and your loot will pop out. And if you've got enough vestiges of dread, then you're going to be able to interact with the Harvester and trade this for seasonal loot. And you may also be lucky enough to get an opulent key to drop, but more about that in a minute. So don't forget about interacting with the Nightmare Harvester. First few times I did this activity, I didn't know that was a thing, and I missed out on that seasonal loot. Well, next up, let's have a look at how to find the Lockdown Protocol chests. So after you've killed the boss, there's a couple of minutes to search the area to find two other secret chests, which are randomly located in a few different locations. So these are often close, but they're located behind doors, and you have to interact with these switches to find the location of the chests. You can also put on a mod on your ghost to make things easier, and Wombo Detector is really, really useful here. You know, when the event is finished, you'll see a message on the screen, lockdown protocols in the Castellum have temporarily lifted. You know, often the loot chests are near switches, and these switches actually beep, so you'll have an audio cue, as well as a visual one, if you have the right ghost mod on. So good luck hunting for the chests. You'll always have two extra, but they're going to spawn in random locations each time you finish the event. Well, finally today, let's have a look at opulent keys. So opulent keys are for opulent chests, and they are found around the derelict leviathan. And you'll get your first opulent key in the tutorial mission for Season of the Haunted, and that'll give you a good demo of what they are for. So opulent keys and opulent chests are great. You'll be able to get the beloved sniper, Ostringer hand cannon, the Mida mini tool, and also Drang. So all four of those weapons are excellent, especially beloved and Ostringer. So when you get an opulent key, you want to inspect it, and you'll see a clue on the key. For example, I had one that said Royal Pools at the Feet of Greatness. You then want to head to the location Royal Pools and figure out what that means. So given there's a big statue of Callus in the Royal Pools, it makes sense as to what that clue means, and you'll find that chest near the statue's feet. And I will be providing guides for all the hidden opulent chests this season, so if you need some help, check out This Week in Video Games on YouTube, search for the clue in the search box, and hopefully you're going to find a helpful video once I've found them all. Well, that is it for the Nightmare Containment activity and the rewards, the opulent keys, and also the secret chests. You know, let me know what you think of the activity down there in the comments. What's your first impressions, and how do you think it compares to previous season's activities? Well, as always, thank you so much for watching, and for more Destiny 2 content like this, 
hit that subscribe button down below and subscribe to This Week in Video Games. Or you can check me out on Twitter at TWIVG Podcast. If you enjoyed this video, found it useful, lucky is sharing the video, it would really help me out. Otherwise, check out the other videos on the channel. Well, thanks again, and I'll see you soon.